So a long while back I made a hot toddy on the show, and some of you have taken objection to how I made said toddy, so I guess I'm just gonna have to remake it. No, 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 don't mind me at all, it doesn't bother me at all, slaving in this hot bar all day for you, I don't mind, you have fun with your friends, have fun, I'll be fine, I swear I'll be fine, don't worry about me, I'll just, I'll just make you a hot toddy again, since my first one wasn't good enough for you, I'll just do it again, alright? <laughs> So in that hot toddy episode, I made a toddy with hot water, sugar, bitters, and whiskey. Actually, monkey shoulder scotch with a twist of lemon. In fairness, that is a bit of a departure from the Jerry Thomas 1862 recipe, but not by much. He would have skipped the bitters and the addition of the lemon twist, he would make that drink called a, a whiskey skin. I really actually really like the name Whiskey Skin. I don't know why, I think it's a cool name. So that recipe that I made with the bitters and the twist, it's sort of my own very, very minimalist light touch embellishment on to that Jerry Thomas recipe from the 1860s. Kind of putting my own spin on it without stretching it too far. And I am a huge fan of that formulation. I enjoy them on many a cold night, but then I didn't grow up with this drink the way a lot of you in the comments seem to have. The general consensus I get from the comments is that for most of you, this drink must be made with honey, probably lemon juice and maybe black tea, and then seasoned up with a bit of mulling spices, allspice, clove, cinnamon, that kind of thing. Honestly, that sounds very good. It's not the Roots version from the Jerry Thomas Guide, but who cares? I really wanna try that, that sounds great. So I'm gonna whip up a version based on the bits and pieces that jumped out at me from the comments. Um, I don't have like anything specifically planned here. I kinda know what you guys are talking about. You wanna see some honey, you wanna see some lemon, you want me to do something with some, some scotch, probably, probably some scotch. Uh, so I was right on that front. And uh, some of you want me to use black tea. And I actually, I meant to bring in a couple of a little tea, uh, but I missed that up. Uh, throw that in here. Oh God, that's so risky. I just realized like that this lid could come flying off. We're gonna go PG tips, because I had a box. That's what we're gonna do. I always use the monkey shoulder. It's kind of my go-to. I brought this out because I thought it's interesting, but I am not a big, super peaty scotch fan to be honest um, but the artist blend this smells lovely from compass box and i haven't had a chance to use it and it's really it's the perfect i think you know you don't want to this is too much too much for a toddy i think it's too, too fancy uh this would be perfect this would be perfect so i'm gonna start with lemon so we're gonna go with some lemon juice i think a half an ounce i'm gonna go with a half an ounce i don't think i want too much i just don't um and i want a one ounce of honey syrup. This is just honey that I've added a little bit of water to to make it easier to pour. So we're gonna go with an ounce of that. And that way, actually, half ounce of lemon to one ounce of honey syrup actually puts the honey and the lemon in pretty equal measure um, because the honey is diluted a little bit. Let's do one and a half ounces of our scotch. Shout out to Curiata here for uh, providing excellent scotches, mail order straight to your house. You can check them out and the link in the pinned comment below. So we've got lemon, we got honey, we've got some scotch in there. Probably want a cinnamon stick. Yeah, I think I definitely want a cinnamon stick in there. I'll add a cinnamon stick, just add it in right home. Take my lemon and I'm going to cut a wheel or two. And I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna poke some holes. I'm gonna stud this with some cloves. And I find that you can jam the clove straight through the rind of the lemon, but I tend to break them in the process. I find that pre-drilling makes your life a lot easier. So these are cloves, and I'm making terrible eye contact with the camera. None, almost none. This is my new approach, just no eye contact. A very awkward show, no eye contact. It would look very pretty to do that. So let's do that for now but recognize that that's not very effective because what we wanna do is we wanna get that all into the drink, actually. This is a personal touch. I'm a huge fan of star anise when it comes to mulled anything. So I'm gonna drop that in there because I like it in there. And why did I do all this before the water? Because I wanna add the hot water to my spices so that the hot water has a chance to agitate across the surfaces of them and kind of bring out those expressions. And I'm just gonna eyeball some hot water in here now. Right into my star anise there. Bit of fresh nutmeg. Jerry Thomas's guide calls for some fresh nutmeg. I don't see too many of you guys using nutmeg online, but we're gonna do that anyway here. Just a little choo 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 choo. Little nutmeg there. I'll call this the consensus, uh, the comments consensus toddy. Let's see how it is. This looks really good. I, I think I'm gonna love this. I have to say, I like that. It's a much brighter drink than the version I usually make, which is made with monkey shoulder typically, which is a little different than 
the Artist Blend, which has a lot of vanilla notes in it, I, and I like that. The spices are kind of getting a little bit lost. What we should do is we should take our lemon wheel, get it right off the top there, and lay it sideways into the drink so that those cloves are in the drink and they're marinating in it and that the lemon oils from the peel are in there and everything is kind of working together in that hot water. And this drink should get better from that process over time. The honey lemon combo kind of kicks in later. The, I gotta say, I'm used to a toddy that's got some some meat on its bones. I mean, that maltiness to the, to the other version that I typically make, you can almost chew on it. Um, you know, it almost is a, I can't quite explain it. It's, it feels hearty. It's a heartier drink. This feels brighter. Uh, it's like a glass of sunshine. It's a totally different kind of concept. To me, it comes, it comes from a very different place. Or I guess it comes from the same place, but it gets to a different destination, if that makes any sense. I think I would just leave the lemon out. I just don't think I'm not a big on a lemon in a hot toddy, but I do like it a lot. And uh, I appreciate the commenters who asked me to make this. I kind of, I'm curious now about doing it with the tea. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it one more time. I'm just gonna pour this, uh, pour it out. I don't know about pouring it out. Maybe I'll just pour it into myself. Let's do that again. Let's do that again. We have plenty of hot water. I'm going to start this one. So we're just gonna drop a tea bag into the thing at the bottom. We will scoop it out when we're done. We like honey, we like lemon. Let's do another half ounce lemon. Let's do full ounce of the honey. We're gonna stick the compass box here, the artist blend, one and a half ounces. Okay, let's add our hot water. We have boiling water right here. Well, it was boiling, it's not boiling anymore. Go a step further with our cinnamon while that's warming up, what the heck, we may as well. And we'll just actually try to grate a little bit of the bark in there. And we'll do a little same with the nutmeg here. Nutmeg away. Lovely, lovely. Boiling hot water. Top that up. Make tea, please. And I'm not even going to help it along by giving it a little stir. We lose a lot of temperature from our water because uh, our other ingredients are not heated. So we lose a lot of temperature right away. But it is working. You're seeing plenty of color change here. We're getting, this is really turning into some tea. Uh, which is nice. And we'll just scoop out the bag when we're done. That'll work. In addition to that, we will prepare another studded lemon. Okay. And our lemon is done. Probably been, you know, maybe not a full three minutes, but I mean, that's pretty good. We got some darkness there. Um, I will press it out as best I can. I want to make sure I get as much of my drink back as possible. I don't want any scotch going into my tea. Okay. And we've got our lemon. We will float that across the top there. Drop in our cinnamon stick for this one and uh, we'll call that a toddy. Let's see how it works. If it's better with tea, I'm curious. Oh, that's a lot better. Wow. Oh my God, that's deeply improved. That's got so much more body and flavor profile and evolution and the tea really does um, come through. I hate to say this, but I do think it's now a little bit undersweetened. It, it feels a little, little bit too tart to my taste. I like the honey notes that are there. I don't think I want to add more honey though. I think I want to just add a bar spoon or two of simple syrup. I think that's what I, this is missing. And I think we'll have a really nice toddy. You know, in truth, the honey is actually a really modern, as far as I can tell, uh, it's at least, you know, modern to like the 20th century uh, affectation on the toddy they were traditionally made with just simple syrup or sugar. Oh my goodness, I love that. It's got that lemon, honey, thing that happens with lemon and honey and tea and that bitterness. Very, very nice. The, the vanilla notes are a little bit muted, not totally lost. You're still getting it from the Compass Box uh, Artist Blend. It will take time, but these cloves will continue to express slowly and the lemon oils from the peel into the drink from the warmth and the heat, and they will change it over time. I mean, you might finish it before they do a whole lot to it, but then again, I don't know. I think I'm getting a little bit of that bitey cloveness, that almost numbing sensation. That's very good. That's excellent. I like that way a lot. I like it with the tea. It's a lot less thin, like the flavor profile on the, the one with just the water was like, it, it, you know, a lot of you say it's medicinal, it's a cold thing. That started to taste medicinal. This tastes like, oh, I like this. This is just like a good old, put your feet up by the fire kind of drink. And it keeps getting better actually, it does. With this in mind, I kind of want to try this other toddy recipe I found online. It's from one of my favorite bartenders uh, right after this. So before I turn on the camera here to shoot this, I did a bit of Googling. I wanted to know why there was such a discrepancy between the early version uh, the 1860s version of the hot toddy and what most of you have in your head as a toddy. And I still don't know. I've got no idea where that recipe got rewritten to involve tea and honey and the rest. I'm gonna have to leave that one to far better historians than I, actual historians and journalists, not, you know, pretend clowns on the internet. But um, while I was looking for some kind of a anchor modern toddy recipe to lash the ship of this episode around, 
I stumbled into a recipe from Jeffrey Morgenthaler and uh, this sounds extremely good, so I just wanna try it. Um, so let's do his recipe, uh, reproduced poorly by my own hand, um, and uh, let's move along. So he builds his in something he calls a bartender's Bain Marie, which is brilliant. It's just a Bain Marie built from the two tins of a cocktail. It lets you heat up the ingredients before adding the hot water to the drink, which helps the whole thing hold a higher temperature. It's genius, honestly. So I'm gonna build a Bain Marie here with my two tins. And I think that the idea would be, I think two small tins would work fine, but we're just gonna put a bunch of hot water in here and we'll set this in here to float. So now we've got this kind of hot crucible for us to mix our drink uh, together in without diluting anything. Uh, this is super genius stuff from Jeff Morgenthaler. So now to the dry cup here, to the dry tin, I'm gonna add a couple bar spoons of allspice dram. This is St. Elizabeth allspice dram. I wanna do three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. One ounce of ginger syrup. Uh, and this is made using Jeffrey Morgenthaler. Uh, he calls it the San Francisco method. Uh, equal parts water, equal parts sugar. Boil those together, dissolve it, pour them over an equal part of ginger root in a blender, blend the heck out of it for a minute, and then just strain it, and uh, it's pretty good stuff. Boiling ginger in syrup for long periods of time yields a ginger syrup that tends to be sweeter than gingery. This syrup is more ginger than sweet. Now I want one and a half ounces of bourbon. Uh, in the blog post he wrote that I read, I didn't see anything specified, so I'm just gonna use my, my personal favorite here, Old Grandad. I do really like Old Grandad. One and a half ounces of Old Grandad. And now we're gonna stir these together in the Bain Marie to get their temperature up and to have them be well mixed. Uh, so I'm also going to preheat the glass that I'm gonna make this in by pouring some hot water into it. So here we go, that's the glass I'm gonna put this one in. Let's preheat the glass. So mix that up. Um, and the stirring here is actually increasing the heat, right? So this is gonna make this drink hotter as I stir because of thermodynamics and science, I don't know. Uh, but it, you can feel it getting hotter, it's working. Ah, don't push down on the top of your Bain-Marie, the hot water will come out the sides. Um, okay, so that's good and hot and ready. This is hot and useless now. Um, I will dump this out, get rid of the hot water here. That's now hot. I will pour this into my glass, done. That's our toddy. And I'm gonna top it up with uh, hot water and that's it. A lot of uh, these recipes call for all kinds of spices and things like that. Jeff's uh, did not, other than that ginger syrup, which is an interesting touch. Uh, and so for a garnish, he says just a, a, a peel of orange, like you would um, you know, an old fashioned with a twist. Uh, and then I think in his, uh, he suggests just dropping it straight in there so that the oils and the heat continue to express. And let's try, this is Jeff Morgenthaler's, I think, I think I did this right, Jeff, uh, his hot toddy. It smells freaking phenomenal. Wow, that is really different. That is a huge departure. I don't know if I did the ginger syrup right or not. I mean, that is very gingery. That's nothing like the way I make it with the monkey shoulder, typically with the um, the maltiness to it. This is all ginger, all lemon, orange, uh, bright citrus mulling kind of thing going on. I'm really enjoying this. This is like a very, very good version, like the ultimate version of that first commenter's consensus one. It's hot. I mean, it's physically hot, but also it's a hot ginger and dynamite kind of drink. That goes right into your sinuses, opens up your face. I mean, sets your no nasal passages on fire. This is intense. I really like it. It's awesome. I personally still want some of that mellow maltiness. I don't think you can get that ever at the same time as like ginger fire. I think that those two flavors basically cancel each other out. You know, would it benefit from a dash of uh, fresh nutmeg, you know, like in the Jerry Thomas guide? Maybe. Actually, you'd be surprised. The nutmeg does show up. It doesn't improve it at all. It's not like a welcome addition, but it, it is there. You know, a little cinnamon, maybe? With this little star anise. I like star anise in anything, quote, mulled or hot. I just do, like a mulled. I love lemon, cider, allspice, and star anise together. It's very nice. When I say cider, I mean an American cider. I just mean hot apple juice. And a little cinnamon stick. I mean, it certainly looks nice in there. Does that actually improve the flavor? I don't know, probably not. I don't think it needs improving. I'm just curious to know if anything else you add to it stands up in the face of all of that ginger. Ooh, no, I like the cinnamon. You get that right away. I like the cinnamon a lot. The cinnamon actually really complements 
the ginger and rounds it out to another dimension. I like ginger cinnamon combo a lot, I think. You wouldn't think that they would work so well together. I wouldn't anyway, because they're both kind of, neither one is hot. Cinnamon isn't like hot and spicy like pepper and neither is ginger, but they kind of are, you have that perception of them. It's like they're adjacent tangential circles on a Venn diagram or something like that. They overlap a lot with hot, but without being hot, it's almost like a chord it's like a flavor chord that gets you to this hot thing. And so it kind of works. It works better than I would think it would. I don't know. I want personally, my personal take on this is that I want a hot toddy. When I want a hot toddy, I want something that's mellow and kind of sleepy. And just like, I like that warm malty cereal scotch toddy that I make with some bitters and sugar. I like that. This is a real pick me up. This thing, woof, like it wakes you up. It opens up your eyes. This is before you shovel the driveway. This is get your ass out and get to work in the snow. Mine is after you shovel the driveway, leave me alone. That's the difference, I think, in my opinion. <laughs> I love it. I really do. It's getting better and better, too. The lemon and the ginger are just getting nicer together. I have a sweet tooth. I think that maybe <laughs> this is a little undersweetened for me. I'm not going to add any sugar to it. I think it's great the way it is. I am breathing a lot clearer now, though. I'll tell you that. That thing works. Uh, that's a good drink. So thank you, Mr. Jeff Morgenthaler, again, for another amazing recipe. I made you three more hot toddies today. I hope that you are very happy with yourselves uh, making me do this again. No, honestly, it was necessary because my, I don't know, I was not, I was really blindsided by that. I was like, ah, yes, here's the hot toddy. This is the Roots foundational hot toddy. Everybody will respond to positively to this and get this. And instead, a lot of you, I mean, that was, that's a popular episode, but a lot of you were just like, what the hell is that? Uh, that's not a hot toddy. And I, I really did not know that because I didn't grow up with a hot toddy that way. I just wasn't, we weren't hot toddy people. And so I just did not have that experience of having this very strong familial connection to that drink. Um, so thank you for calling me out on that and getting me to do it again. And I hope this was uh, fun. I think it was fun. Did you have fun? I had fun. Was it good for you? It was good for me. Well, I've been making the show for like six years. So if you enjoy it, I hope you will check out some of these other episodes. Uh, the, there's so many of hundreds of these damn things now. I've been making this forever. I, I live here with you uh, in, in here in my bar. Thank you for joining me in another adventure in trying some drinks. Toodles. Oh, and do the social media stuff. Like, follow, subscribe, whatever. Thank you very much for your patronage.